this episode, I'm going to build this stepped piece of concrete. This is an addition to a perimeter foundation that had some issues, but complete with rebar, forms, epoxy, all of that. I'm a semi-retired software engineer who has a pretty long history of uh, doing carpentry and uh, handyman projects. A couple years back, my wife and I decided to, that we wanted to be homeowners. We really got the bug for uh, the idea of renovating an old house. So we ended up getting this house here in Oakland. In addition to the research that I did uh, and a zillion YouTube videos I watched, we had a couple friends over that had construction experience. And, um, and one in particular uh, has become our house whisperer. And many of the, the ideas that I'm gonna talk about in this video came from him. Thanks very much. The house was built in 1916, it's a craftsman, and whoever built the house had the rain leaders end up, the downspouts, dumping the water right next to the foundation. So it's been doing that for a while, but it's resulted in some spalds or crumbling concrete. Another possibility is uh, sometimes old cement was made with unwashed sand, sand from the ocean uh, that has salt in it and that can cause degradation. Before the job started, I really scraped away all this stuff, all the crumbly, spalling concrete, and uh, you can see it left some divots. And uh, this corner here was fairly distressed looking. I decided to, to cover uh, this uh, step, where the, the perimeter foundation steps down on two sides with a new cement pour, and then run, run the whole stretch of new concrete up about 20 feet up the side of the house towards the front of the house. Now there are several stretches of cement uh, that I, I assume the original builder did not build these. They were added after the fact. Um, and you know, they're, they're built to reinforce the perimeter foundation, but uh, in some cases they look solid, but along here they've kind of snapped away from the original perimeter foundation. There are gaps, you can see, they're not really connected anymore. And uh, so I decided I wanted to remove these. But then up here, there's, uh, well, there's a crack, you can see on the left there. Um, and I need to fix that with epoxy. But the additional concrete that's existing here is in pretty good shape, actually, and it is connected to the perimeter foundation. So I'm gonna leave that and connect to it so I crumbled away, uh, demolished all that stuff, and uh, it left me with these, these uh, holes in the uh, cement floor. Then I set up some, some you know, started playing around with uh, the forms. So at this point, I sent some photos over to our house whisperer, and he recommended putting up a piece of this two by 12 LVL that you can see here, uh, screwed into all the studs and basically locking everything into place. So apparently you don't want to rest your new cement on top of uh, a cement floor. The remedy was to get a diamond tip saw blade on an older skill saw because this can mess up your, your nice new tools and uh, saw off all the extra concrete. I built up the sides of the form so I could see where it was going to step down, what it was going to look like, what was going to be covered with cement and marked uh, the places that I wanted to drill into the concrete for rebar. Then I pulled the, the side of the form away and uh, you know built all the rebar, of course. And uh, here's me uh, with the Simpson Set XP right, epoxy. Is, uh, Simpson Set XP, this costs over 50 bucks a kit. Uh, here we go. Okay. It has this cool nozzle that you stick on with all these spirally things. You're supposed to run off a bunch of this epoxy into a you know something paper towel or something, like I'm doing here, until you can see that it's uh, very well mixed. Here is the uh, compressed air in there uh, with a couple of straws I taped together to get to the bottom of the hole. You got to make sure there's no dust in there. And now we're pouring epoxy. I used these uh, twine and uh, finishing nails into the mud sill to hold them sideways um, so they would hold up. Um, it can be hard to tell how much uh, epoxy is in the hole and you want to you start at the bottom and slowly work, slowly pull the, the nozzle out as you're um, pouring epoxy into the hole um, so that there aren't any air bubbles. It's always better 
to use a little too much than to use too little. Some of these weren't as deep, uh, but most of them were about a nine inch depth into the perimeter foundation there. One more thing to bear in mind with rebar is to make sure that none of your rebar ends up closer than two or three inches from any surface of the cement. Generally, sort of two horizontal members uh, in parallel that go the, that run the length of this thing and around the corner, and uh, they're connected, as you can see there, uh, to the side, uh, the rebar that comes out of the side that's epoxy in to the foundation. Um, they're connected there, and then there are these uh, vertical members that are kind of like candy canes or upside down L's. They're, uh, so you've got uh, three dimensions of steel in this assembly and uh, twisty tied with these uh, their rebar ties. You want the assembly to be very strong. And Oh, this is the footing I set up for the 45 degree uh, you know, support side angle stuff that, uh, that supports this. I use duplex nails and uh, with a 12 gauge coated wire, 12 gauge insulated wire, um, and a quarter inch masonry bit uh, to drill into the concrete. And then you just you know put the wire in and nail the duplex nail in through the board, and that keeps it <laughs> really solid. And now we're getting up towards the existing cement. There's the crack that got uh, epoxied. Um, so yeah, we're, we're rebarred and epoxied into this existing, you know, a cement addition that looks newer. We're, we're rebarred and epoxied into the, the house's foundation. And um, we're, it's going to be, it's going to tie, the cement I'm going to pour is going to tie all that together. And then this is the concrete that we're leaving alone. So I, I did two loads of 1,200 pounds of concrete mix each. Uh, for a total of 2,400 pounds, I, I didn't use all of that. I'm using a cement mixer out in the back of the house. Um, and I'm, I'm a one-man band, so this is how I worked it out. I'm just pour, I pour it into a five-gallon bucket, and then I'll carry that into the, into the house where I'm going to pour it in. Uh, it's, it's a little messy, but uh, I did it on a fresh piece of cardboard that I set down, and I just used a trowel to scoop up you know, if there was a big blob that fell out, I'd just scoop it in and mix it up. One thing to be careful of here is the cement dust. When you're mixing cement, it gets dust everywhere. Um, and that dust really isn't good for you. So, you know, best would be to wear breathing protection, which I'm not doing, but what I do is I'll take a deep breath and then I'll hoist that bag of concrete up and, uh, and then I'll pour a good bit of it and then I'll just back away five, 10 feet and breathe for a little bit and take another breath and pour some more in. It's surprising, the manufacturer tells you, you got an 80 pound bag of cement is um, just under, you know, it's like 3.4 liters of water for all that cement, which doesn't, doesn't get it very, uh, very wet. I think most people put a lot more water than that in, but uh, I try to keep it, you know, as, uh, as thick as possible and not running um, to make the strongest cement product. So I'm using a piece of rebar here to uh, stir it up and mash it down and um, just make sure there aren't any air bubbles. And then I just mash it down with the trowel. And basically for each three and a half, four gallons of concrete that I bring in, I'd uh, repeat this process and just you know, kind of iterate. And here is the finished product. This is you know three days after I poured the cement and I've been watering it for you know every morning. I'd spray some water on the top so it's nice and moist. It's looking sharp and uh, it's always really rewarding to pull these forms off and see you know what the finished product looks like. But you can see it's a it's a really solid piece of concrete coming off. It's uh, it's looking sharp down there, looking solid. Certainly no holes or gaps or anything like that. There's a lot of stuff like that around the perimeter of the house to, that was that was added to reinforce it. So, so I'm kind of keeping in the same vein of stuff that's already been done. And here's here's the finished product. So that's it. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.